Let me know when it. Good afternoon, my name is Joshua of Campbell Torrance. I'm the executive director here at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. And for today's History at Three, we're getting, uh, having a little fun, but kind of interesting. We're, we thought we'd show you the mechanical room in the brand new Education and Visitor Center. And you may say, well, what does that have to do with history and so on? Well, as some of you out there have known from following our presentations, we've been giving you a little sneak peek of the new building. And we thought we might show you how truly state-of-the-art this new building is. And what better way to show you that than in the mechanical room. Now, joining me on today's History at Three is curator Rich Malley. This is the kind of thing that we get pretty geeked out about, don't we? We do indeed. Now, our colleague Cindy is not as enthusiastic as we are about the, Apparently this. Apparently not. But um, I don't get that. I don't understand, but... But uh, let's go. Let's go around the corner and see the state-of-the-art mechanical room first. Uh, pause on the way there. This is, of course, our server. Um, you can see all of the utilities come in from underground, and then these wires connect all over the building. Mm -hmm. These handle our IT system, our phone system. So basically, it's the communication hub, if you will, of the new building. But wait, there's more. This, for all intents and purposes, is the mothership, uh, the control center for this really sophisticated, state-of-the-art new building. Uh, what you're seeing uh, in front of me now is the sprinkler control system. It's both, for those out there wondering, it's both a wet and a dry system. Um, so that is all of this here. It has multiple zones. Um, and it's uh, it, it truly said they are. We'll go back out in the end. We'll show you the little uh, sprinkle heads and how they pop down. Mm -hmm. We won't touch them though. Right. We will not. <laughs> Over on this wall, we have controls for a um, a heating system on our west entrance, which melts snow and ice uh, in the winter time, and it's just all triggered by temperature and humidity uh, sensors, and it keeps that entrance, uh, which would be prone to icing and, and drifting, it keeps it perfectly clear. This is our um, transfer uh, station here that allows our emergency generator to kick on and provide um, electricity for the essential functions of the building for if there is a case of a power outage. Now, uh, we can't necessarily come and hang out um, and work like we normally would in an outage, but the great thing is if there was an outage, we know that this building is going to be protected and that the systems, the heating, cooling, monitoring systems are going to be uh, uh, continued. Speaking of monitoring, uh, just behind us, we can't show you all the details, of course, because it is security, but that is our security hub. Um, we have cameras throughout the building that uh, allow us to keep an eye on uh, the comings and the goings, uh, both uh, in real time while we're here, but also we have remote access as well. Those of you who might imagine that a building of this size has a huge you know, um, a furnace uh, would be really shocked to see that this, in fact, the, the, the furnace this size takes care of the needs of, of this building, which is over 9,000 square feet. Now, we have redundancy, and so we have a, uh, we, we have a master and a, and a backup uh, furnace here, and the whole building can operate off of one. But in the event that one goes down, the, there's another one to kick in so that there's no loss of, of controls in the building. But it's, isn't that amazing? Look how clean, how small that is. It's remarkable. One of the really neat things about this, uh, our system, there's a building management system, and we can log on to a computer, and we can uh, uh, check the each, all the rooms have sensors, that, or most of the rooms have sensors that show us the temperature of a room and the humidity point uh, in a room. And we can go in and we can 
can actually control the temperature in, uh, right uh, on the computer uh, of the different rooms, and we can actually do that remotely. So we can be checking on the condition of the building uh, remotely from literally, I guess, anywhere in the world, if you will, but certainly from home. And that's, that can be really useful, especially in these, uh, it's like a day like today. Uh, we happen to be here, of course, but if the snow had been as bad as they had initially predicted, we could be in checking on the building and make sure that its uh, performance is up to snuff. That uh, building monitoring system, interestingly enough, is also in part uh, controlled by monitors and sensors on the outside of the building. So the outside of the building, uh, outside air temperature and humidity, we're taking those readings. A computer system <laughs> is then helping to make sure that we are optimized as best we can on the interior conditions based on what's happening outside. We, we essentially feel like we're now computer scientists trying to understand <laughs> and run this building, but it is pretty remarkable and it's a bit of a trick for us because of course we're a little bit more used to uh, 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 historic houses and um, Should we say analog? <laughs> stroking the clockers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, actually on that note, tell them about your humidity and temperature readers. Okay, um, I think we have one around the corner. Um, we have one in the uh, we have one in the library. Okay. Um, we use in the historic houses we use what we call recording hygrothermographs, and they record the temperature and the relative humidity in a particular space over a course of either a 24-hour period, or a seven-day period, or a one-month period, and. Um, this gives us a sort of a permanent record of what the temperature and the humidity in each of the houses is doing. And it helps us understand the stresses that the house is going through on a seasonal basis and how that might impact certain types of furnishings, such as uh, veneered furniture, for example, that is susceptible to rapid changes in temperature and humidity. So, you know, it's low tech and it's high tech. And you know, it's interesting, your low-tech is still considered the gold standard. You can't beat those. Yeah. They're the most accurate uh, uh, of, of everything. So anyways, here we are in, a, in the control room, the, uh, as I say, kind of the, the nerve center, if you will, of this beautiful brand new state-of-the-art building. Now, normally, uh, often on these uh, histories at three, we say we can't wait to see you. And, we will still say that. We, we can't wait to see you in person when you're allowed to be back here at the museum. Sadly, however, we won't be able to show you this space. So this is your only chance to see this space. <laughs> but uh, we can't wait to have you back at the museum in person when it's safe to do so. Please join us next week for our Histories at 3. And we appreciate you uh, tuning in. Oh, our camera person, otherwise known as Cynthia, is reminding me to point out our sporty new Web Dean Stephen. How about that? Yes. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend.